Welcome everyone to today's live update. The reoccurring viewers and subscribers may have seen here our previous Linux builds, of course T2 Linux, as someone yesterday immediately asked, but more T2 Linux videos. I anyway wanted to try here some new stuff. And what this short update is about is we tried this not only CLang, this alternative to GCC Clang from LLVM project fame compiler, but also because we need this already for Mesa and stuff, a GCC less system build that we have done the previous weeks. And I thought I finally give it some production use. And before I do this, I wanted to see some benchmarking numbers. If I deploy this for some web services and such, then uh, I would actually first know how well it performs. Because uh, what this is about is that, um, so for a ceiling, Clang only system. You can't right now not use glibc because the code base is just so old and uh, yeah obscure with historic GCC GNU features and stuff. So right now glibc does not compile with ceiling due to some assembly and whatever linking glue and whatnot. So due to that we used Musil. Musil an alternative C library, much smaller, more compact, more modern than glibc. And that was nice to test anyway, because the more choice and options, the better, certainly. And um, this is what we have here. So Musil, so before this vast, huge benchmark numbers and table that many of you might have seen already, is of course here our testing how much all this optimization stuff and link time optimization really gain. And actually, I probably, probably should switch already to some runtime numbers. And uh, what is new in this table are those line service Musil before everything else was glibc benchmarked all on the same AMD Ryzen system and new to this now is this Musil line and what is interesting here to see so Musil is much more much smaller much smaller code base I usually like small and beautiful and minimal also for security and often for performance but you would think glibc the GNU C library is so optimized and such for decades it's the far fastest, latest and greatest. And although these benchmarks here are a little bit specific, they are mostly benchmarking here these algorithms of the compiler. Anyway, it's some indication of real world usage. Of course, in a real world, you also use this for your OBS streaming or gaming and such. And to a lot of degrees, this is exactly the kind of load that you would actually get from uh, using such a combination. So with this we should compare for example the Ceiling Kling O2 and Musil. Yeah it's slightly unfortunately due to alphabetic numeric sorting here but whatever so from here to here and it's not like totally slower or something even here slightly well in the terms of measure measurement accuracy anyway. So it's not like it's like two times slower or something so it's basically mostly the same which certainly is a good thing as as fast as a decade old well optimized library so most of the benchmark marks may be yeah usually in the measurement accuracy but somehow set standard as so often that is surprisingly two seconds faster so it is not like it's always slower or something it's usually quite similar especially for this number crunching algorithms anyway um, we also I also built the link time optimized version here so that is nicely to compare because it's just next to each other so certainly in in the magnitude of measurement accuracy except set standard for some reason set standard not only does benefit from link time optimization but also from Musil here so it's not a one-time random thing but ceiling O2 to Musil here two seconds fa uh, faster and also from LTO O2 LTO to uh, well n not not two seconds but a little bit at least so that is certainly uh, nice to see that well you can't say it's always faster but it's also not always slower and uh, it is for sure uh, much smaller you don't see this much smaller in terms of this size output here because this is the application size so the huge size gains there are in your shared 
objects, your shared libraries, libc in your system. So the sizes here from LTO, well, just a tiny little bit smaller here, but larger there, but not too huge of a difference also here, mostly similar. One thing, however, build time is a much different thing, and maybe there it's more visible that the C library, of course, providing all the memory allocation, abstraction, all the POSIX API. So usually this is a rather thin layer just calling. Actually, to, it's, it's a surprise that the glibc is that large because most of the stuff like the IOCTL, the read write, they are extremely thin wrappers to your kernel. So it's not that much libc code. The only thing in libc, or not only, but like sorting and other algorithms, maybe math functions, uh, sine, cosine, and, and stuff. And other like uh, DNS resolve, of course, there's a lot of more in the C library, but most of which doesn't affect this outcomes. But of course, build time, this is the compiler running and stressing the C library much more than, for example, uh, just this compression that doesn't call much to the C library except read write and such. But you cannot attribute this change. So LTO to Musil, this changes here are much larger and usually much slower also O2 to O2 Musil. So that being said, some high throughput of whatever load there might be slower. However, one huge warning sign, don't blame Musil too fast because we have two huge changes here. One, only one is Musil, the C library. The other is the STL, the C++ library. And CLang, Kling and LVM, they are huge C++ code bases and they Think, I think they make quite some use of modern C++ templates and such. So the bigger effect in this slowdown might actually not be the C library, but the C++ standard template libraries, lib CXX or whatever that is in CLang LLVM land. So yeah, that but that would be some topics. The problem is you benchmark something and then you spend here some hours compiling and testing and that's the outcome. So I'm only the messenger here. If you would want to know more why ceiling at least is here so much slower, then one would need to analyze specifically whether it is mostly the C++ library or, I, well, I would expect because C++ library so much string handling, buffer handling, and all this kind of template stuff. So I would expect that to have much more of an effect to a C++ compiler than just the relatively tiny syn, syn abstraction from the system C library. So I will most likely advise this relevant not only for um, cloud servers, so unlike all the vintage and retro and P3 stuff here, this is something you could all use if you are looking for a compact code base. Maybe I make a core minimal build of T2 available. I think I tarred up the Musil build. The reason I can't, well, actually, I can't. I wanted to say I can't publish it. Actually, I published this, so this is available, I think, at least. I, I think I packed it together. Anyway, if you want any of those, always let me know in the comments. Like, hey, can you not publish this or build that? That is what we one thing we want to build the YouTube channel here for. But so unlike all the vintage stuff, you can use this on your cloud servers if you want to have some smaller code base. Um, for cloud services, microservices, all the virtualization goodness. And I will probably go ahead and deploy this on one of our cloud servers, maybe the download server that also is um, delivering the T2 downloads, among other stuff, like our commercial binary only. Exact scan OCR kit downloads. Maybe I try this as a first step to see how that is performing. That is one of the not as, well, of course, mission critical, but if something goes wrong on the download server, that is uh, just a very small switch there in a couple of minutes and the old one is running again, but you need to start to deploy this somewhere. And um, besides this, of course, we have the Sony Vario P, we have the P3, SGA Octane, all this older memory constraint like P3, 256 megabyte, right? All the systems and especially cloud microservices, right? Because if you are serving your customers with thousands of instances, then some 10 megabyte of glibc eventually add up rather quickly. I could actually check. Um, I should have this still locked in here. Yeah, I have this here from, you see the same path through from the GPU path through built on the AMD Ryzen. 
And when we take a look here, so this is change rooted here into the user build, not making that up. And we have here lib64, we can compare this, so this should be libc something, or what would the, or is it lib libc, wherever that is. Let's take a quick look, size comparison wise, should be somewhere, maybe we take a look in the package management var IDN flist musel, that should be somewhere, libc. Oh, why did I not find this? Ah, user. Oh, this is of course stupid. The glibc lives there. So that is apparently 600k just for the uh, human readable 586k, which is of course amazing. That is half of a. Uh, don't have a floppy here. Uh, half of a one and 1.44 inch uh, floppy in speaking in vintage terms, and the glibc of course much larger as far as I remember, libc is 06, and that is a stupid zoom link, because why should it not be, and h, yeah, this is more than nearly three times the size, and as far as I remember, I think in Musil, the linker, the dynamic linker, Yeah, are we streaming? Maybe we're streaming again. Um, yeah, so can't make this shit up. Uh, this was actually not TG TG3. I usually, unless I forget this, but if I stream on the aging and failing Mac Mini here, which has a strange TG3 hiccup that goes away if I down the interface and up it again, then usually it is more stable. Um, so I pre-primed there the stupid TG3, but you can't make this, can't make this up. This was Doxis cable reconnect, so amazing internet in 2019. And they are slightly annoying. Previously, the force doxes 24 hours reconnect was in the morning at 6, but somehow now it's in the uh, slip to the evening or afternoon, whatever. Stupid internet. Anyway, yeah, um, wherever the disconnect was, I hope you learned something and enjoyed this. Quick look on daily findings here in the office, the small project updates in between. I hope you learned something and find this interesting. Maybe you have never heard about ceiling or clang or by the way tell me in the comments what is your preferred pronunciation for clang and uh, I'll, I prefer ceiling but I think many other people clang for whatever reason yeah so um, and also uh, musel that most people just you know they are used to GCC and uh, glibc and they don't even know that clang and musel exist of course in previous times we've also uclibc and dietlibc and uh, such fun stuff but yeah now of course musel is the most feature complete new small thing in town and I hope to see you soon for other next videos and live streams to come and thanks for watching.